Hello, this video is the first in a series of videos I'm going to make on how to teach students about positive and negative integers. We'll be using materials for this, and so this first lesson is really just an introduction to the materials and to the idea that the materials can stand for real-life quantities of positive and negative numbers. The materials being used will be these algebra tiles. I made these myself out of two millimeter scrapbooking foam, and they work nicely. They're one centimeter by one centimeter. I have green for the positive and gray for the negatives. And these colors correspond to the Montessori materials where the green is what they use for the units and the gray is what they use to represent negative amounts. So even though this is a lesson with materials, it's still abstract in the way that we're trying to take the idea of positiveness and negativeness away from things students already know about and putting it into these materials. So before students come to this lesson, they really should have experience dealing with positive and negative numbers. It can be anything from temperature to sea level and heights above and below sea level, earning and spending or debts, games with penalties such as football where players can have negative yardage, or board games where students have to move backwards. Really, they should just have a variety of experiences where they're dealing with positive and negative numbers in everyday situations. And then that'll make the materials that we're using have some meaning behind them rather than just manipulating objects around. They'll be able to relate the real life experiences that they've had with these new materials. So let's begin. So I would start the lesson by asking students when they remember using positive and negative numbers before. And they might say things like sea level. I might ask them questions about temperature. So if it was zero degrees and it dropped five degrees, what would the temperature be? And they should be able to say negative five degrees. We could talk about money, about spending money as being negative amounts of money, especially if you owed somebody some money. And so we would just do a bunch of examples of these just to remind students that they've seen positive and negative numbers before. So then I would introduce the materials. I would tell students, this green square represents positive one. Positive one what? Well, that depends. It could represent a step forward, one foot above sea level, having one dollar in your pocket. It doesn't matter, as long as it is a positive amount. So this would be positive two. And this would be positive three. And this, what would this be? Positive six. We could have students practice identifying different amounts we give them. Next, I would introduce the negative numbers. I would say something like, this gray square represents negative one. Negative one what? Well, that depends. It could represent a step backwards, a foot below sea level, owing someone a dollar. And of course, students could come up with these on their own. So if this is negative one, this would be negative two. And what would this be? Yes, negative five. And we could do this as long as we need to. We can mix up the practice between the positives and negatives and keep giving them practice until we're sure that they're able to work on their own. Now I could have students identify different numbers. I could put out six green tiles and ask, what number does this represent? Or I could put out four gray tiles and ask, what number does this represent? After a few of these, I could then reverse it and ask students to create numbers. I could write on a slip of paper, positive five, and say, here we see a plus sign before the five. When we see the plus sign in front of a number like this, it means the number is positive. If there were no sign at all, it would still mean positive, but here we want to emphasize that. Can you show this number with the algebra tiles? And so the student could do this. We could then write negative four on a slip of paper, and we could say that the minus sign in the front, when we see it like this, this means negative. So this number is negative four. Can you show this number with the algebra tiles? 
and so on. So students can continue this work as long as they need to. They can identify numbers and create numbers with the algebra tiles. For the younger students, this work might go on for a while. For the older students, they might be ready to jump into the next lesson, which is working with zero pairs. So that'll be the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one, and thanks for watching.